Arch Linux doesn't really work, or does it? To be sure, Arch Linux and I are officially divorced, right? You can see that video right here. In fact, it was the first video I made on this channel, but we still shag from time to time. So what does that mean? Well, it means I actually have Arch Linux installed on one of my computers that I use almost daily. Also, I have Arch Linux derivatives and things on virtual machines that I use from time to time. There are some things that have occurred to me over the last year and a half, and I just want to share them because I think it will help people understand the nature of the problem, which would also make them better equipped to deal with things like package breakages and things like that. And also, maybe there's a way to prevent it. Well, you're going to want to stick around because I have a suggestion or two or three. Arch is a rolling release, meaning it gets frequent updates. Pacman, the package manager for Arch, was designed to manage these updates efficiently. But here's where things get tricky. Pacman operates off of official Arch packages using standardized build scripts. These build scripts are tailored specifically for the official Arch repositories. Then we have the AUR, the Arch user repository, which has a community contributed packages. These packages are incredibly helpful. But it can be a common source of breakages. Why? Because they're not maintained with the same rigorous testing that the official Arch packages are. When you update with Pacman, you're installing the latest versions of packages for Arch Linux. But some AUR packages may be still dependent on older packages. Imagine Pacman, for example. Pacman tries to install the hypothetical package.so.6.0, but an AUR package is still using package.so.5.9. When these versions don't match, that's when conflicts happen, and they often require manual intervention to fix it. Kernel compatibility is another factor. Arch provides several kernels, Linux, Linux LTS, Linux Zen, which are maintained to stay compatible with the latest Arch packages. However, Manjaro, for instance, often holds back updates to test packages on its specific kernels because they're different. And this actually creates additional issues historically. Now, if you are on Manjaro and using community contributed AUR packages, you might end up with incompatibilities, especially if a package relies on a feature in the latest Arch kernel that aren't present in Manjaro's kernel yet. If you caught my last video on Manjaro right here, I briefly talk about this. Many users face issues on Manjaro when using the AUR packages because they're not always immediately compatible with Manjaro's slightly different update schedule and kernel version. All right, so now let's get into what you came here for. Ways to keep your system stable. So the first tool I recommend is TimeShift. TimeShift allows you to take snapshots of previous versions of your system. This is a real lifesaver when experimenting like with the AUR or making big updates because if something breaks, you can always roll back to a previous working state. Another great option it to reduce potential conflicts is just to use sandboxed applications. App images, flat packs, snaps, they run in isolated environments, which means they don't interfere as much with your system packages. So if you want to install like popular software without risking conflicts, this is really a solid option. For the more advanced users, I would say another option that I think is on the table and uh, could actually be a real viable option for you would be distro boxes. They let you create containerized environments. This is a way you can run applications in many containerized versions of different Linux distros, which would be on your Arch system. It's a powerful way to keep things stable. For those wanting a whole new level of stability, you might consider an immutable desktop. Or you might consider Bedrock Linux. Immutable systems prevent packages from being altered by updates, 
meaning that your core system stays untouched. And Bedrock Linux, meanwhile, lets you mix and match components from multiple distros, so you could use Arch packages alongside other more stable distributions like Debian or Fedora. Those sound like reasonable options for many people. Here's a quick way to manage your AUR conflicts if you must use an AUR package. If you see a message that a package version in the AUR isn't compatible with like the official Arch version, you have a couple of options. First, check if there's an updated version on the AUR. If not, you might either find an alternative package or temporarily uninstall the conflicting AUR package until it's updated. Now, this is kind of tricky because say you installed Google Chrome on the AUR and then you installed Spotify and, you know, a lot of other things like Slack or Zoom or whatever. All these things use Google Chrome and all of these things will be dependent on Google Chrome. So you're going to have to install a chain of things before you can update it. And that does happen. So if you have to install Google Chrome, I wouldn't actually recommend that you install it out of the AUR. And there you have it. Arch and its derivatives can be very stable if you understand how the package management system works and take some precautions, okay? And I think the same is true even for Manjaro, which I kind of hate. And I will be honest, it was like 10 years ago, I just decided I hated that distro because my packages kept breaking and it never occurred to me that it might just be the AUR. That might have been the problem. And when I stopped using Arch Linux, that's pretty much why. And so now that I understand that, I could use time shift, containerized apps, immutable setups, and I have plenty of ways to keep my system solid if I wanted to go back to Arch Linux, if I'm being perfectly honest. And I think this is also true of Manjaro. Now don't forget, experimenting and learning are parts of the Arch Linux experience, so don't be afraid to try these things out. What do you guys think? I'll see you later, nerds.